All right, hi everyone. Uh, today we're gonna be going through a neurological assessment. So we're gonna go through the whole assessment for you all. Today we have Diego and Kimberly as our students. I'm gonna be your proctor, my name's Dan. And then we also have Cam in the background over there. Yep, he's gonna be our patient for us. All right, so you all ready to get started? Yep. Okay, so you're gonna be dispatched to the unresponsive patient at the park. Okay, so go ahead when you're ready. All right, is our scene safe? The scene safe. All right, we're wearing our proper PPE. BSI. Okay, great. So you're gonna walk up and you see your, your patient slumped over on a park bench. Mm -hmm. uh, he's looking a bit pale. He's about a mid forties um, male, all right? All right. Okay, so it appears that our nature of illness is um, possibly neurological just because he appears to be unresponsive. Can we confirm that this is our only patient? Only one patient. Okay. I don't believe we need additional resources right now, but we can always come back and reconsider. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to take away the next section. Yes. Um, so general impression, you said male in his mid forties, roughly in his forties. Um, and then this would be a medical emergency because we don't suspect any trauma looking at our patient. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Um, let's go ahead. And so chief complaint, we don't really have one. Let's go ahead term responsiveness first mm -hmm. so let's talk to the patient say hey hey are you okay do we get any response to that okay no response to that okay um what about if we elicit a painful stimuli by go ahead and sternal rubbing the patient okay um so he kind of groans when you do that okay, okay. so patient is responsive to ver verbal okay um so so far that's all we've got we have a male patient responsive to verbal stimuli um so we painful. The painful stimuli. Painful stimuli. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's I would go ahead and say our patient does look sick, um, just because responsive to painful stimuli, laying Cold, down. pale skin. Yep. yep. And then let's go ahead and just say we don't need any spinal precautions currently because there seems to be no indications of any falls or anything. He's just kind of laying on this bench right here. Um, and let's go ahead and assess the patient's airway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is okay. So you walk up and you hear snoring. Snoring. Right. So let's clear that with a head tilt, chin mm -hmm. lift. Okay. So the snoring goes away. Okay. So the airway is currently patent. Let's mm -hmm. look at breathing. How's our tidal volume? Okay. It's shallow. Okay. okay. What about the rate? Uh, very slow. Slow. And then what about the pattern? It's regular. Regular, okay. Are we seeing any accessory muscle usage? Any tracheal tugging? No, no, attractions. Right okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and attach a pulse ox real fast. What does okay. it read? You're at eighty-four. Eighty-four. And then let's check lung sounds real quick. Okay. So you just kind of hear some of the snoring, but overall, other than that, you're not hearing too much. Okay. Um, Diego, I think we should start initiating oxygen treatment via a BVM since he's mm -hmm. not breathing adequately on his own. Um, let's connect this to 15 liters a minute of oxygen. Do you want to hand me the tank? Yes. Yeah, can you all set that up for me, please? Okay, okay so we said BVM and we're gonna do 15 liters per minute? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. All right, so you can keep going while you do that too. Okay. Do you want me to? Jump on the circulation. Okay. Um, so, just to state, our patient does appear to be in respiratory distress on our way to respiratory failure. So um, we're going to go ahead and initiate the 15 liters per minute for, per BVM. Um, is there any major bleeding anywhere? You don't see patient? any blood. Okay, that's good. So then what we can move on to, um, can you just go ahead and say the skin condition of the patient again? Okay, what kind of conditions are we looking for? What parameters? Um, usually like temperature, the moisture. Um, we have the color, it's we have pale. The color. Yeah. yeah, so it's they're pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Okay. okay. What about the pulse strength, rate, regularity, and equality? Okay. It's uh, strong, normal, regular. Um, and then how do we test for equality? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our patient and check the radial pulses to see if they're equal in strength. Okay. Equal? Okay. okay. Um, so, and then capillary refill. How is that? How do we test the cap refill? So we're going to go ahead and pinch the nail bed to see how fast that color returns. All right, less than two seconds. Perfect. Um, Diego, I would say that this patient is in a state of shock. Do you agree? I agree. 
All right. Um, so let's initiate some shock treatment. So we're going to lay the patient um, supine and keep them warm. We've already got oxygen um, treatment. So we're using the BVM. I don't think we said what rate, but we're going to go about one breath every five to six seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then this looks like to be a priority patient. He's in a state of shock. So I'd say let's load and go and finish the rest of the assessment on the, in the ambulance. Okay. Sounds good. So you're on your way now. Okay. Perfect. So let's do a, let's skip a history right now. Mm -hmm. go I'm not going to get a response right now. Let's mm -hmm. do a focused um, assessment. Um, let's do a neurological assessment. Yes. So I, do we see any signs of head trauma? You don't see any. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's look at the pupils since we have the irregular breathing. Let's see if we have maybe, mm -hmm. um, do we have any pinpoint pupils? You do. We mm -hmm. have pinpoint okay. pupils. So I'm suspecting an opioid overdose. Yes. Um, would you like to treat that, Diego? Yeah, we'll go ahead and treat that. So what we have here is a MAD device. Um, it's currently filled up two milligrams. Um, and basically with the MAD device, we're going to be able to insert it intranasally. Um, one in each nostril, um, and then we just do it right here. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. So we'll go ahead and do the one, and then we finish off the other one. Okay. Good, nice and missed. Okay, um, and our goal with the Narcan is we want the patient to be breathing adequately mm -hmm. on his own. Mm -hmm. um, so we administer two mils and we'll reassess um, in a couple of minutes, um, but let's rule out anything else. So there's no signs of active seizure, correct? What would that look like? Um, any tonic clonic movements, um, anything to indicate there's an active seizure? Nope. Um, okay. What about a past seizure? So any biting of the tongue or any incontinence? You don't see either of those. No. Okay. Um, are there any environmental conditions to suggest this could be hypo or hyperthermia? No. No. Um, what about any, I would, if the patient would respond to me, I'd love to do a Cincinnati stroke scale mm -hmm. um, where we test to see if there's any facial droop, arm drift by asking the patient to hold their palm, arms up, palms out, palms up, and then close their eyes um, okay. to see if there's any drift. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask the patient to say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks to see if they slur their words at all, if they're not already evidently slurring, and then to see if when the patient's last known normal was, um, Okay, so but could you explain what um, how you would test for a facial droop for me? Yeah, so I'd ask the patient to smile or puff out the che cheeks and see if one side droops lower. Okay, so uh, at this moment, your patient can't really answer any of those questions right now? Okay, um, if they could, if they were able to have a motor response, I'd ask them to um, squeeze my fingers Yep, to test to see if their grip strength is equal on both okay. sides. Okay, so they're not following commands yet? Okay, um, let's check the blood sugar, see if this is potentially a diabetic emergency and also that's the last add-on to do the la stroke scale okay so you have a blood sugar 96 96 okay. milligrams per deciliter it's pretty normal um you think of anything else to you um we could also palpate the head just to make sure that they're since we already look for any obvious signs of head injury we can mm -hmm. palpate the head um and just check our gloves to see if there's any blood on them okay so you don't find any blood right. um is there any injury to the teeth at all uh, you don't see any. No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, if the patient was alert, I'd love to ask if there was any cloudy, is there confusion, blurred vision, headache, or any other not notable deficits that weren't there prior to this event. Um, but the patient is still not responding, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're kind of moving around a little bit more now, um, but you still can't make too much out. Okay. So there's not responsive. No. That's right. They're not alert. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, in that case, let's go ahead and run through what questions we'd like to ask if we were able to get a history. You want okay. to run that? Um, yeah, and then before, just another point, um, any uh, discoloration on the abdomen or anything like that. Okay, no, we don't see anything on the abdomen. Okay. Um, we said they were pale, cool, and diaphoretic. There's no indication of a fever? Um, no, okay. there isn't. Okay. Yeah. No open wounds or anything like that either. No. Oh, yeah. Nothing to scream infection at us? Uh, no, not too much. Okay. Other than diaphoretic, but they don't feel hot. Too. Okay. And then um, if our patient was also awake and there was bystanders, we would ask, like, if this is regular for a patient, um, any, like, lasso normal, stuff like that that we already covered in stroke, 
We'd also ask if, say, um, if they want to hurt themselves or others, mm -hmm. if they're seeing any things that um, may not be there. Seeing or hearing. Yeah, seeing okay. or hearing. Yeah, so you, you look around, but nobody's there. So mm -hmm. whoever called must have ran off. Okay. okay. Um, and then let's see, do we smell any fruity or acetone odors or alcohol on the patient's breath? You do not. Okay. Do we see any drugs or alcohol paraphernalia around? Um, you do see some pill bottles and some needles. Okay. Um, okay. Next to your patient. All right. Um, anything else on that uh, section? Not that I can think of. Let's go through the, hi I'm, I'm gonna tell you what questions I'd like to ask. Obviously mm -hmm. our patient, there's no bystanders and the patient can't respond to us, so we can't get answers, but we'd like to know if they're, they have any allergies, if they take any medications on a daily basis, um, what their past medical history looks like, especially anything pertinent to this event currently, um, what their last oral intake was, so the last thing they ate or drink, and then any events that happened leading up to um, the event going on mm -hmm. okay and yeah. then um and then we would also ask for opqrst so we'd ask the patient for the onset so if this was sudden or gradual um obviously they can't respond to us now um and then we'd go for p so if there's any like discomfort since there isn't really any pain um that we know of with the patient we ask if there's any discomfort um or any feelings that radiates anywhere else um, what makes it better or worse? Sorry for um, P. What makes that better or worse? If it radiates anywhere else, the discomfort. Um, Q, the quality of it. So if they could describe their discomfort to us, like their situation, um, how it feels like. And then um, severity. So we would ask them to rate their discomfort, um, specifically for neurology, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst. Um, and then time, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, when did this happen? Uh, essentially, closer, to, somewhat similar to our last known normal. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So your patient's still not responding, so can't give you too much info there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how are how's their breathing right now? Is it still shallow and slow? Uh, no, it it's picked up a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. and okay. it does seem to be adequate now. Okay. And they kind of seem to be rustling around. Okay. Um, let's take a set of vitals. Um, what is our actual respiratory rate? Okay, your respiratory rate is going to be 16. Perfect. What is our heart rate? 98. And our blood glucose was 96 milligrams per deciliter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. What is our blood pressure? Uh, you have 130 over 78. And what is our current pulse ox reading? So your pulse ox has gone up. So we're up to 95 now. 95%, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so there's no need um, to re-administer the Narcan because the patient seems to be breathing adequately mm -hmm. on their own. Um, the vitals are improving. Um, so still decreased level of consciousness, but that's okay. Um, so are you ready to move on to our reassessment? Um, yeah, and then just to jump back to, I think there's sec like secondary things we can ask for in the sample. I think it was like weakness. If our patient was um, experiencing any weakness, any chest pain or shortness of breath, um, that would be another couple key points that we would ask if our patient was able to respond to verbal. Okay. okay. So, and then are you all still bagging this patient here? Um, no, I feel like since the Narcan is improving their... Yeah, um, there's no need to continue, no need to continue the continue. BVM. Um, okay. We would just continue to monitor the respirations. Um, so during a reassessment, which would be every five minutes because this is um, a more critical patient... We are going to reassess vitals. We're going to monitor the ABCs. Um, we're going to check our intervention. So, so far, our BVM treatment um, seemed to help raise the O2. Mm -hmm. And the Narcan seemed to help the patient breathe on their own. So, those are good. Um, and then we would ask the patient how they're feeling overall. Um, but overall, pa condition of the patient is improved compared to when we first arrived on scene. Mm -hmm. And then just to state, since we aren't BVM uh, using the BVM anymore, we could potentially since it is shock treatment, keep them at 15 liters per minute and we, we could just switch to a non rebreather. Mm -hmm. um, um, but basically we would just reassess the patient and make sh see and determine what we'd want to do because we could also switch to nasal cannula if they're able to breathe on their own and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, and are we going to do anything else? Um, I'd like to give a radio report. All right, let's hear it. All right, Northwestern, this is Chicago EMT training unit one coming into you with a mid-40s male that we initially found 
uh, responsive to painful stimuli with snoring respirations that were uh, cleared with a head tilt chin lift. Uh, we found his breathing to be shallow, tidal volume, and slow. So we initiated a BVM at 15 liters per minute. Um, the initial pulse ox was 84%. It's currently at 95%. Since then, we gave we saw pinpoint pupils and gave two milliliters of Narcan intranasally, um, and that seemed to improve the overall um, breathing. So we switched him to a non breather at 15 liters per minute. Um, our skin conditions were pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Um, we have stable vitals currently with a heart rate of 98, a respiration rate of 16. Uh, the blood sugar was 96, uh, blood pressure 130 over 78, and then that uh, pulse ox currently was 95%. We are about, lung sounds were clear. Um, we're about 10 minutes away. Do you have any other questions or commands? Yeah, so how's your patient doing now? Um, so patient is still not alert, but moving around more and breathing on their own. Okay, great. That sounds good. We'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Great job, everyone. All right. So we're going to go through um, a few points that we might have missed, uh, especially a great job to cam back there. <laughs> doing great. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, so just a few points here and there. Um, so let's see, we should probably ask, since this is neurological, we should probably mm -hmm. dig in a little bit more for um, like history of diabetes and such. But, you know, we, we can't really do that too much here yeah. um, since our, our patient wasn't there. So we're still going to get that point for that one, but a point to, to cover at least, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, so did we talk about PMS um, when we went through this? No. no we Alrighty, <laughs> so could you guys show me how we would, how we, we would assess that? Yeah, so and uh, we talked about seeing if the pulses are equal, but we're going to see if the pulses and um, the extremities are equal. They okay. are. Mm -hmm. And then for motor, w can you squeeze my hands? Can you wiggle your fingers? There's good motor on both sides. And then I'd have a patient close their eyes. Mm -hmm. And then can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Which finger am I touching? My left ring finger. <laughs> and then I would do the same thing for the feet um, to see if the pedal pulses. And then can you push against my foot like a gas pedal? Can you feel this? Which toe am I touching? Okay, great. Okay. And another one um, maybe might be like a finger to nose test might have been good for mm -hmm. if our patient was awake and yeah. such. So can we kind of go through how we would do that as well? Yeah. Yeah. You want to go through it? Sure. Um, so I'd ask my patient, so can you touch your nose and then touch it to my finger? And then can you touch it back to your nose and to my finger over here? And then once more over here. And then do the same thing, but with your other hand, please. Good. Over here. All right, that's great. Okay. Um, and I think the only other thing that we might have to go through was, did we say how often we were going to reassess this Every patient? Every five minutes. Okay, okay. So maybe I just missed that one. All right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, well, I think that's everything. So we hope that you all uh, learned something from this video. Um, yeah. So that's going to be our neurological assessment. Cool. Good job, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no.